Have you ever found something that was lost? It was hidden in plain sight? My name is Ruth Dwyer and lucky me, that happened while I was looking very closely at the Church of the Hagia Sophia, built by the Emperor Justinian in the year 537 in Istanbul. Armed with a compass, a measuring tape, and a camera, wonderful discoveries were made. The Hagia Sophia, known to much of the world as the Hagia Sophia, was built between 532 and 537 at breakneck speed in Constantinople, now Istanbul, by the Emperor Justinian. He called it the Church of Holy Wisdom. The interior is remarkable, having been built according to the ancient Greek philosophical principle of Symmetria, which was espoused by the 6th century BC mathematician and philosopher Pythagoras. What is Symmetria? It's the balance and harmony of every element. And, according to Pythagoras, every element is united and made meaningful with number. Everything about the entire design scheme is united, joined together by one basic unit. And what is the basic unit of the design of the Hagia Sophia? Remarkably, it is the diameter of the monograms of Justinian and the Empress Theodora, their initials carved in marble in a white marble ring. And what are the components of this building's particular symmetria? They are visual, astronomical, and mathematical. And how could Justinian's architects, and Themius of Tral and Isidore of Miletus pulled together such an extraordinary design plan. Because not only were they architects, they were also mathematicians and astronomers. Now, let's take a look at the building and start with the date of its dedication, December 27th, 537. On this date, Justinian stood with his procession at the entrance of his church to begin the ceremony. But all of a sudden, he burst from the procession, ran down the center of the church, and exclaimed, O Solomon, I have outdone thee! What did he see and know that would inspire him to be so joyful? It had to be the symmetria, the design scheme which involved the visual, the astronomical, and the mathematical. We'll begin with the visual. What did he see? Well, he saw his and Theodore's monograms everywhere, their insignia in marble, surrounded by a white marble ring. He saw many circles in the building which strongly resemble their monograms. For instance, the circles on the walls with white marble rings, and above the imperial entrance, and on the floors at the Empress Theodora's place of honor, and at the coronation site, again, the numerous circles with white marble rings. And when he looked up, he saw the great dome, a huge circle, with another white ring, this time in white light. Now, what about the astronomical? What, astronomically, could have given Justinian such delight? Well, leading to the imperial entrance is a remarkable door with a large arrow. In Justinian's time, the arrow had a crossbar, which is no longer there, but we can still see its outline. Are there any other arrows? Yes, there are. One immediately above the emperor's door, leading up through a circle that also looks very much like Justinian's monogram. When we compare the two arrows, they both had a crossbar during the time of Justinian. Where exactly are these arrows and the imperial entrance? The floor plan of the building shows them right here. So, what are these arrows doing here? To me, they are asking me to look up. Okay, let's look up, way up. And here we are on the roof, right where the arrows told us to look, above the imperial entrance. And what does Google Earth tell us about this exact location? If we look at the latitudinal coordinates, they are amazing. Do you remember all of the circles we have seen so far in the building? The latitude for this exact place on the planet includes the numbers for pi. And not just pi, but pi to six decimal places. And considering how important pi is mathematically in determining the diameter of circles, this is truly amazing. And here I must explain that 
centuries before the building of the Hagia Sophia, at the time of Ptolemy. Latitude and longitude were well understood. Now, let's have Google Earth connect to Google Sky and take us to the same latitude in the heavens that contains Pi, 3141592. It takes us to the constellation Lyra, and particularly to the star Vega. And my goodness, what do we see? We see that the star is a circle with a white ring, and that the latitudinal coordinates contain Pi, just like the Emperor's entrance on Earth. And not just Pi, but again, Pi to many decimal places. So, regarding Symmetria, we can see quite clearly a visual, astronomical, and mathematical connection between Justinian and Theodore's monograms and the star Vega in the constellation Lyra. Let's look again at the coronation site. When we ask Google Earth and Google Sky to look at the roof of the Hagia Sophia over the coronation site and to take us to the constellation Lyra, what do we see? We see the beautiful ring nebula. And what do we see there? A very colorful sky formation which includes a central circle surrounded by a white ring. Let's get back to Symmetria. We've discussed the monograms as being the heart of the visual and the astronomical. Now let's look at the monogram's role in the mathematical. Pythagoreans believed that number is everything and that the perfect number is six. How is the perfect number six expressed in the Church of the Hagia Sophia? Remarkably, this too begins at the imperial entrance. When Justinian stood at his entrance, and ran through his church. He was on a compass heading of 123.6 degrees. Why does 123.6 matter? Because it is the numerical equivalent of an important Pythagorean equation explaining the perfection of the number 6. 6 is the only number in which the number's components, in this case 1, 2, and 3, whether added or multiplied, always equal 6. Pythagoreans apply meaning to number. Indeed, while 6 represents perfection, 10 represents God. Pythagoreans love number progressions. In the Hagia Sophia, we can find a magnificent number progression based on the numbers 6 and 10, 16, 60, and so on, all of it based on the diameter of the monograms as a basic unit. For instance, if we multiply the diameter of the monograms by 6, it equals exactly the height of the capital. It also equals exactly the diameter of the queen's circle on which Theodora stood. The monogram times 16 is the diameter of the central disk of the coronation site. The monogram times 6 and times 6 again is the height of the emperor's entrance. And amazingly, the monogram times 6 times 60 equals exactly the distance from the emperor's entrance to the end of the apse. Are there other sixes in the building? Well, yes, there are many, in fact. There are six aisle divisions off the nave, six groups of six columns, six round-headed windows in the sanctuary apse, and so on and on. Even the dedication date happened on the 6 times 60th day of the year, December 27th. What 16s are there? Let's begin with the coronation site and compare it to the constellation Lyra. On the floor, there are 16 discs with white marble bands and 16 discs without bands. The constellation Lyra, where Google Sky took us earlier, has 16 star formations. Let's look at them. There is a trinary star system, that is, three stars which revolve around each other. There is a binary system, two stars which revolve around each other, and one of them is a red dwarf. There is one evolving eclipsing binary system, and we can see quite clearly that one marble disk is eclipsing another. There are two giants that are orange. There is a pulsating red subgiant. And here we will take a look at a close up of this particular disc. The marble chosen is quite variegated, perhaps suggesting a pulsating star. And there is, of course, Vega, the white ringed giant. So, the symmetry of the Hagia Sophia includes perfect and auspicious number progression based on 6 and 10, and a visual progression from the small to the large, indeed, the extremely large, from the monograms right to the star Vega. 
And just look at all of the circles we have seen. Every one of them is connected to Pi, and Pi is connected to the heavens through Justinian's imperial entrance. What conclusions can we reach? First, given the precision of the location of the imperial entrance, and the remarkable matching of it to the constellation Lyra, Justinian's astronomers obviously had the ability and the means to be able to examine the sky with great detail. We don't know how they did it, or what instruments they used, but they accomplished it with great precision. We can also conclude that the design scheme for the Hagia Sophia, based on Symmetria, used the monograms as the important basic unit of the entire design. The design was breathtaking in its intellectual scope, achieving a perfection of balance and harmony unrivaled. So, the emperor's entrance was not just a gateway to the church. Via Pi, it was a mathematical link which was a gateway to the heavens. King Solomon was renowned for his wisdom. Is it any wonder that Justinian burst from his procession and declared, O oh Solomon, I have outdone thee? And is it any wonder that he named his masterpiece, the Church of Holy Wisdom, 